Hello friend, welcome to new scientific video related to quantum computing which is a rapidly emerging technology that harnesses the laws of quantum mechanics to solve problems too complex for classical computers. The foundation of quantum computing can be traced back to the early 1980s when physicist Richard Feynman pondered the possibility of harnessing quantum mechanics to perform computations beyond the reach of classical computers. Feynman's visionary ideas laid the groundwork for the development of quantum computers, as he recognized the potential of quantum systems to execute parallel calculations and solve complex problems. The concept of quantum computing received a major boost in 1985 when David Deutsch, a British physicist, proposed the notion of a universal quantum computer. Deutsch's work demonstrated that quantum computers could simulate any physical system efficiently, thereby highlighting their immense computational power. In the 1990s, Peter Shore, a mathematician at Bell Labs, introduced an algorithm capable of factoring large numbers exponentially faster than any known classical algorithms. Shor's algorithm posed a significant threat to the security of encryption protocols widely used today, sparking interest and urgency in the development of quantum computers. Today, IBM Quantum makes real quantum hardware, a tool scientists only began to imagine three decades ago, available to hundreds of thousands of developers. The engineers deliver ever more powerful superconducting quantum processors at regular intervals, alongside crucial advances in software and quantum classical orchestration. This work drives toward the quantum computing speed and capacity necessary to change the world. These machines are very different from the classical computers that have been around for more than half a century. Here's a primer on this transformative technology. When scientists and engineers encounter difficult problems, they turn to supercomputers. These are very large classical computers, often with thousands of classical CPU and GPU cores. However, even supercomputers struggle to solve certain kinds of problems. If a supercomputer gets stumped, that's probably because the big classical machine was asked to solve a problem with a high degree of complexity. When classical computers fail, it's often due to complexity. Complex problems are problems with lots of variables interacting in complicated ways. Modeling the behavior of individual atoms in a molecule is a complex problem, because of all the different electrons interacting with one another. Sorting out the ideal routes for a few hundred tankers in a global shipping network is complex too. Quantum computers are elegant machines, smaller and requiring less energy than supercomputers. An IBM quantum processor is a wafer not much bigger than the one found in a laptop. And a quantum hardware system is about the size of a car, made up mostly of cooling systems to keep the superconducting processor at its ultra-cold operational temperature. A classical processor uses bits to perform its operations. A quantum computer uses qubits to run multidimensional quantum algorithms. Your desktop computer likely uses a fan to get cold enough to work. But quantum processors need to be very cold, about a hundredth of a degree above absolute zero. To achieve this, they use supercooled superfluids to create superconductors. At those ultra-low temperatures certain materials in our processors exhibit another important quantum mechanical effect. Electrons move through them without resistance. This makes them superconductors. When electrons pass through superconductors they match up, forming Cooper pairs. These pairs can carry a charge across barriers, or insulators, through a process known as quantum tunneling. Two superconductors placed on either side of an insulator form a Josephson junction. The IBM quantum computers use Josephson junctions as superconducting qubits. By firing microwave photons at these qubits, we can control their behavior and get them to hold, change, and read out individual units of quantum information. A qubit itself isn't very useful but it can perform an important trick. Placing the quantum information it holds into a state of superposition, which represents a combination of all possible configurations of the qubit. Groups of qubits in superposition can create complex, multidimensional computational spaces. Complex problems can be represented in new ways in these spaces. Entanglement is a quantum mechanical effect that correlates the behavior of two separate things. When two qubits are entangled, changes to one qubit directly impact the other. Quantum algorithms leverage those relationships to find solutions to complex problems. 
Thanks for watching the video.